Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be making corned beef and this is absolutely amazing and incredibly delicious, more traditional corned beef. So here we go. You're going to start off by weighing your beef brisket. Now you could either use the point or the flat or you can use both. It doesn't really matter. Um, or you could just use what you can get your hands on. So you're going to weigh your meat and you're going to write that down. Once you write down your meat weight, and preferably in grams, multiply that number by each ingredient to determine how much you need, okay? And so I've already done that. And as you can see, we have salt, we have bay leaf, that's uh, mustard seed, cinnamon, allspice, coriander. There we have some clove, just a tiny little bit of clove. That's what that is. We also have some peppercorn, juniper berry. We have some sugar, some uh, cure, cure number one. Um, so be sure you get that. You're going to need cure. Anyway, I've listed all the ingredients in the, in the recipe below, and they're all in percentages. So you're going to combine all those ingredients together, and you're going to put them in a coffee grinder. All right? So what we want to do is we want to grind this up as fine as we can, and I found that if you just mix them all together and grind it, it's going to actually provide a much better working surface so that it grinds fairly evenly rather than grind each one independently. So just grind them all together. Make sure you do that. And then you're going to want to, you know, pour that back into your cup so that we could use that here in just a minute. That's what it should look like. And what we're basically doing is we're going to be doing something called the equi equilibrium cure. All right. There's a lot of different ways to cure meat. In this recipe, we're going to be doing an equilibrium cure, which means that we are going to be curing by percentage volume. All right. If you do it that way and you and you follow this recipe, your meat will never get saltier than what we add to it in this one step. The only downside is that it takes a little bit longer than doing like a, a wet brine or a wet cure. And so this is a dry cure. And we are going to just be really rubbing those seasonings in. And you want to make sure that you you get it as much as you can at you know into the meat. You want to rub that meat really, really good because in a second we're gonna go ahead and place that in a vacuum seal bag. And any last remaining spices that are in the in the tray, in the pan, you want to just pop that in the bag as well. What I really love about this particular method is that although it does take a little bit longer, your results are going to be very accurate, very specific every single time. And so there's no guessing as to how much salt you need. There's no guessing as to how much time you need to brine it for. You can leave it in your refrigerator for a minimum of 10 to 12 days, 14 days. And you can technically, you know, let's say if you forget about it, you can leave it in your fridge for, uh, for several months and it's never get going to get any saltier than it's going to be in the beginning. And so it's a great way to that we do it commercially. And if you're going to be making it at home, we definitely suggest doing that. So once you vacuum seal your bag with all your seasonings, just go ahead and write the date on it. I write corned beef, today's date, and in 14 days, I'm going to pull it out of the refrigerator because it'll be ready for the next step. And it really, it all depends on the thickness of your of your cut as well. If you're using the point and the flat together, then you you might want to let it go for you know three weeks. But uh, during that two week process, you're going to flip it every few days, and you're going to rub it down really really good. And then finally, you're just going to open it up, take it out of the bag, and clean all the seasonings off of it. So two weeks have passed. It's been in the refrigerator. We're now going to go ahead and take it out of the bag, clean the seasonings off of it, and um, and move on to the next step. As you can see so far, no problems. Very, very easy. Your meat should have a nice pink color to it because of the cure number one that's been added to it. And so what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're just going to go ahead and rinse this off, get all the seasonings off of it, all those seeds all that extra salt and, and bay leaf, we're just going to clean it up really good. And at this point, if you want to, if you want to cut a little slice off and cook it up, you're going to get a good idea as to the uh, salty level of it, the saltiness of it. And if you personally 
find that it's too salty, which at this percentage rate it shouldn't be, but if you find that it's too salty, then you can soak it in cool water for about 30 minutes. And that's going to actually dilute a lot of that salt out of it. So once you're done tasting it, if you like the way it tastes, pat it dry, you know, with a paper towel, and it's ready to cook. So you're going to put it in a vacuum seal bag. And once you have them in your vacuum seal bag, what we're going to do is we're going to add just a tiny bit of oil, not a lot, maybe a couple tablespoons. The reason we do this is to add a little bit of fat to this particular very tough cut. And what it's going to do, it's going to really, really give you a nice tender uh, end result. And so that's the reason we do that. Now, you're going to notice that we're going to sous vide our brisket, our corned beef. But if you don't have a sous vide machine, that is completely okay. You can actually use your crock pot if you have one of those, on the low setting, and it's going to range between 180 and 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you do happen to use a crock pot, then follow the recipe exactly the way that it is. Just reduce the cooking time to about 10 hours instead of what we recommend, which is 13. So now we are cooking our brisket, and it's going to sit in that hot water bath for 13 hours at 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And you just want to check it from time to time, make sure the water doesn't evaporate. But as soon as it's done, 13 hours later, remove your bags and pop it into an ice water bath. And what that's going to do is that's going to quickly bring the temperature down uh, to, a, to a safe place. We want it below 40 degrees. And so you're going to get an ice water bath going, pop your, your brisket in there, and go ahead and cool it to below 40 degrees. And as soon as it's nice and cool, Pop it in the refrigerator. If you try to slice it now, it's still going to be very, very, t uh, very difficult to slice, and it's going to fall apart on you. So pop it in the fridge. It's going to firm up a little bit, and it's going to give you real good sliceability the next day. So now we have let it refrigerate for one night. Remove it from the bag, and at this point, you're done. You can go ahead and slice it however you want to slice it, especially if you're going to be making corned beef, but you can make corned beef soup, corned beef hash, really doesn't matter what you make with this. Pat it dry, get all the extra oil off of it, and you can go ahead and slice it up. And you can slice it as thin or as thick as you want. Just make sure you slice it against the grain. And that's going to give you just the most incredible, tender, delicious, well-seasoned corned beef. So much better than processed corned beef that you could typically buy in the store and so thanks for watching this video if you happen to make this recipe leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know how it turned out also if you have any questions about the recipe itself blast me a comment we can see if we can figure those things out don't forget to subscribe if you like this video give it a thumbs up and as always we'll see you in the kitchen